name of Jesus. But Lord, then we ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill us so that we can receive your word and apply it to our lives so that we can show others how much you mean to us. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, if you got your Bibles, I'll be speaking today on Psalms 23.
with all of a beautiful countenance. Countenance. And godly or goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came down upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ram. That's enough, that's enough for the practice. And we can tell very early that God anointed David. He was chosen. He knew that David was going to do great things, so he anointed him. And he was young. He was a young child. It reads in that scripture that, you know, where where is are all the ones here? And I think they were talking about the younger men. Were they there? He doesn't tell us how old David was. But God did choose him, and he did anoint him. And as you know, that's a practice. We can call it an anointing. You know, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty big deal that God puts his trust in you. Amen. So let's read the first three verses, and then we're going to go back and discuss them. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in great pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. All right, let's talk about that first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean to you? He's mine. He's personal. Right. He's my shepherd. And I shall not want. You know, that's the promise of God. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He made it personal. You know, he was his king, his savior. And every need that David had, he met it. But that promise is to us as well. He is our Savior. And we shall not want for him. So in the second verse, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, I grew up on the farm. And Bobby knows about the farm. When you've got a green, lush pastor, it's just so inviting just to go out and just smell the aroma of it, but mostly just to lay down in it because it's so it's so comfortable, it's so inviting. He makes me lay down in green pastures. And that's what I think of. It's soft and you want to lay there, but most of all, you rest. You rest there. You rest in there. But so many times, you know, you know how uh, we as Christians, and I'm not pointing my finger at you, Tim is pointing back at me. You know, we have, we're so involved. We got too much to do. We got to run this place. We got to run that place. Uh, we're busy in our community. Our bills are on our mind. We, and, and then we feel guilty when we rest. I've done that myself. I'll be so busy and so busy, and I was like, well, I've got this, 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 and this, and this to do. And I feel guilty when I finally sit down and rest. But God wants us to rest in Him. He wants us to come and rest in His presence. Because when we're in His presence, that's where the joy is. Amen. That's when we learn. That's when our relationship becomes greater and greater with our Lord when we rest. So it's good to work hard, but you've got to take time and rest in His presence. You know, there is there is nothing like meeting with the Almighty God Amen. And, and feeling the touch of His hand. Okay, in verse and the other, he says, he leads me beside the still waters. Now, we've seen enough water around here. And if you go to the mountains, if you see a stream, it's so clear. The water is so clear. You know, it's not moving. It's just 
crinkling down, it's not moving. And most people will actually take a drink of it. They'll cut their hands and go to that stream and they'll pick that water up. And so it refreshes our thirst. And we don't have to struggle for it. You know why? Because it's free. God's thirst is free. When we thirst for Him, it's free. We don't have to go and do anything. We go into His presence. He says, I am your living water. Come to me and drink. <clears throat> In John 6, 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. What a promise. That, you know, if I was a preacher, that preach. You know, when we come to Jesus, his belief, if we believe in him, we shall never thirst. In the third verse it says, he restores my soul. That's a powerful verse. It, it restores my soul. Third, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Our affliction is just for a moment. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We don't know that when we're in affliction. You know, we want to get out of it quick. We usually pray, Lord, get me out of this quick. I don't care what it is. If you're in sickness or if you're in trouble or if you done something you're not supposed to do. But God says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. You know, so many people say, you know, but what do you know? How do you know? Just like heaven. Heaven is eternal. Well, how do you know? Well, it's our faith. Our faith is the things that are unseen that are more powerful. Just like I've talked about the spiritual realm above us. It is more powerful than anything that we can see on this earth. So therefore, as Christians, we should be in that spiritual realm. That's where the battles are fought, and that's where the battles are won. In the spiritual realm. So, do God's will. When we take His name, we are to do His will. Have you ever thought about that? When we accept Jesus, we take His name. We take His name. He becomes our trademark. You know, on all these expensive clothes you see and all the products that we buy in the stores, they have a trade name. And they have to live up to that expectation. Well, when we take the Lord, we have to live up to His expectation. He renews our inner man. You know, you can be physical, physically sick and you know that you're not up to par. But when we lose our inner man, our Holy Spirit that dwells within us, to me, we have no power. That is where our power is, in the inner man. Because when you're strong on the inside, it shows on the outside. And we can face anything. It says, even if our outer man is perishing, even if it's perishing, if we're going through that trial, our inner man, what gets us through the Holy Spirit that God left for us. Okay, that was God's provision. Now we're going to go to God's protection. God's protection, that's 
That's a big. All right, let's go to verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Okay, the valley of the shadow of death. I learned something new. I thought I knew this passage pretty well. <clears throat> but I learned that the shadow of death is our enemies. It's evil. It's a depression of dark gloom, and it's a place of ultimate risk. You know, uh, now, when people die, I believe the loved ones are in the shadow of death because they experience that. But this shadow of death that the Lord is, is telling David, David has experienced these things. He has experienced the evil that went against him. His enemies, you know, they, they didn't like uh, David. He was powerful. He was anointed. You know, people don't, don't like powerful people. And you can find sometimes that people will come around you, and if you're not careful, they won't steal your power. But we have to protect that power because it's God-given. So uh, it says, you know, you're supposed to keep the enemy place. And sometimes you do. And you know, even in the Word it says, can we trust somebody 100%? The only person I think we can trust 100% is our Lord. We can trust Him 100%. And it puts us in a place of ultimate risk. Ultimate risk is when we get on the wrong road, it's very risky. Because sometimes people don't get off that long road. And they become entrapped by oh, Satan. This is all Satan's decree right here. You know, but God says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. For you are with me. And a prime example is, uh, we all remember the story when God's people uh, left Egypt to the promised land. This is what he said to them. He says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence. And we saw that a lot of times when they went. He parted the Red Sea so they could go across. And then all the soldiers came behind him that was going to kill him. He just swallowed them up. You know, that was God. He did that. He gave Moses the power to do that. He said, hold your staff up and it'll happen. So he says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Uh, there was a little story uh, while I was reading and, and looking this lady had a sick child and uh, she taught him this song and she said look on your hand and say the Lord is my shepherd and so his ring finger represented the Lord and when he got afraid or he got scared he would grasp that ring finger and remember that verse the Lord is my shepherd. And she said when he passed that she found that he was grasping to that green finger because he knew that the Lord was with him. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's talk about the rod and staff. To me, a rod and staff means his power. That's his power. Just like Moses used his staff, it was power in it. He could part the Red Sea. Can you imagine the sea? And he parts it in the land that they walk on is dry. Mm -hmm. It don't have any moisture in it. It doesn't have any signs of anything that was up under a sea. It was almost like a paved road. And all they did was walk across it. So the rod, the staff, is power. You know, the rod can be of the eternal enemy, if you let it. You 
you know, that's it. We're supposed to put on our whole armor of God every day. Because we're in a fight on this fallen world every day. We need to hold our rod and our staff. Okay, the rock, the staff. I like this part. You know a staff? You know when uh, a shepherd tends his flock, he has a staff and it has a crook on it. So when that sheep gets a little further away like he's supposed to, he snatches them around his neck and pulls that sheep back to him. So the snap, I mean, excuse me, <coughs> so the staff snatches us from harm's way. Let's read John 10, 27 and 28. I'll let you get time to get there. I was a little fast. John 10, 27 and 28. And I might even read 29 and 30. But this explains about the sheep. Say, ye haw, ye haw, or amen, or whatever you need to say. Just after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Ye haw. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Isn't that like the Lord? He knows his sheep. He knows his sheep, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Amen. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. In that testimony that God gives us, nobody can snatch us from His hand. I spoke <coughs> the other week on how He engraves our name into His hands. Can you imagine everyone that accepts God as their Savior is engraved in His palms of His hands? What a miracle! My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Thank you, Lord, for that reading of your word, because it's true. We shall never be snatched from your hand. Let's read Death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and staff, they comfort me. <clears throat> that, that should be a comfort to all Christians. No matter what we go through, we know that God, we are in His hands. And His hand has always reached out to His sheep. And it's so amazing to me that He knows everybody. And he's everywhere all the time. Can you imagine being everywhere all the time? All the time. He's everywhere. Here, too, further. He knows everything. He listens. Jesus sits there on the right hand in intercession for us. And he's constantly telling God, this is what my sheep want. This is what my sheep want. This is their heart. This is what they need. And then the Lord goes to work. And not only does the Lord go to work, the angels go to work. Right. He says, when you pray to the Father, He puts the angels to work. And I love this verse, number five. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, that's kind of flawed. I, can't, I think He kind of flawed. He says, look, Look at these. These are my sheep. I take care of my sheep. You don't have no power over my sheep. So therefore, therefore, we should we should claim that. We should claim every day to our enemies. You know, the host God prepares a table <coughs> in the presence of our enemies. 
But, you know, this, this is my table. They're seated at my table. They're at my hand. So you don't have any power over them, so you better leave them alone. He says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He anoints our head with oil. Because you know what that means? It's a sign of celebration. It's a sign of celebration. Because you know what that is? It's the gift of the Spirit. When He anoints our head with oil, it's the gift of the Spirit. And that's so comforting. You know, when we have healing services, we anoint people with oil. Because it's powerful. It's God's Spirit. So we should be... In this, in this Psalms, I hope you go away today with a new attitude toward this song because it's more powerful than what, because David knew it was powerful. He said, this is my song. He said, my cup runs over. My cup runs over. I know you've heard Michael Combs, he says, oh, my saucer's full because my cup's run over. You know, our cup is a it's a sign of God's fullness and His blessing. When our cup runs over with blessings, we're supposed to be telling others about that. <laughs> but it's so important for our cup to run over because why? Because then it's empty again and it can be refilled. <laughs> Just like we go get a cup of coffee. When we finish that cup, we want another cup. And that's the way we should be about the scriptures and our Lord. When that cup gets empty, we want another filling. We want another blessing, Lord. Fill my cup today. And we should ask God every day to fill our cup. Fill it up so I shall never want any more. <clears throat> okay, let's go to verse 6. And I'll ask verse. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, a believer. Now David is talking about believers in this, in this verse. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's talk about verse 6 a little bit. Number 1, it talks about Goodness. Goodness is the fulfillment and perfection of God's will. That's His goodness. That's His perfection of His will. And that's what we should be looking for. The goodness of God. And then it talks about mercy. Mercy. His covenant. Love, redemptive power, and faithfulness. Aren't we glad that God is faithful? Amen. I would hate, you know, people are looking to us as Christians to be faithful. We are to be faithful in all things. Amen. I know sometimes the road is so hard and we get so tired, but we should never lose our faith Amen. and our hope and our hope because He's got it under control. Amen. You know, a lot of people, they look to... Uh, the elections every year, you know, before they spend any money because they don't, they won't know what a president's going to do. Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. President, God is in control. Amen. He's in control of this earth. He is. He is all and he is above all. Right. Nothing on this earth is below him. Nothing. No disease, no, nothing that we can go through is too hard for God. We have to trust in Him. <clears throat> he is faithful. And then that, uh, He talks about dwelling. To dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Forever. Forever. You can't explain forever. It's a word that has no definition. It says forever and ever and ever we will dwell. But we have to accept Him. You know, we have to accept Jesus. 
by faith. <clears throat> and then we have to have the faith to go on. You know, as long as we live in a fallen world, there will always be trials. There will always be sadness. There will always be tears. There will always be something that we will have to face, whether it be financially or spiritually or whatever. We will face all of those things, but we have to be faithful, just like David. You know, David, he wasn't perfect. You know, he sinned. He had he loved Bathsheba. He lusted after and, and had her life to kill. <clears throat> but God was a God of mercy. And he forgave him because he knew David had been anointed and he would come back to him. So many times my heart breaks for Christians that fall away from the house of God and never come back because they think whatever they've done Whatever they said is too much. It's too much. They have to change. How many times have we invited people to church and they say, Well, I got to quit this and I got to quit that and I've got to get this out of my life and, and I can't come to church. You know, they should be our goal, this room should be full Amen. of people Amen. desiring to know God's will in their life. And we should keep asking. You know, God says, keep asking me. Keep asking me. Don't ask me one time. Keep knocking on the door. Keep knocking on my door because he's there to listen. And he will open that door. And he will answer the prayer. Sometimes it's not the way we want. But it is for our good and for his glory. It's for our good, but it's for his glory. Everything that we do should be for his glory. <clears throat> the old devil's trying to shut the voice down, but he's not going to win. Just going to reject it. Okay, let's kind of do a little synopsis of what we've learned through David's song. We learned that the revelation of God's provision, and protection. We learn that the purpose is to bring us into His house and presence forever. Amen. We learn that we should rest in His salvation. That He died on the old rugged cross so that we might have eternal life and we didn't deserve it. We were sinful people. We all sheep have gone astray, he says in these words. We were sinful people, but he provided a way for salvation. He feeds us with himself. It's he that gives us our strength and our courage and our boldness and our Anything that we might need, God gives it to us. All we need to do is ask. He says you have not because you ask not. And sometimes I think we think it's too too much for God. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing, nothing we can do or say could ever keep us from His love and His hand. So we should be free with asking for that forgiveness. Free because salvation is free and it comes under it. It all falls under it. And this psalm gives us everything that we'll ever need in our lifetime. He gives us His Spirit to quench our thirst. Honey, I call on my Holy Spirit all the time. Amen. Holy Spirit, give me strength. Amen. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, Quench my thirst, and he will if he has. And we've learned that he renews our soul and guides our step in his way. Sometimes we want to walk on our own road, and we've all done it. We've tried it our way. Well, let me try it my way. And what happens? When 
we do not go under the power of our Lord, we're going to fail. Amen. We're going to fail if we don't go through it. We're going to fail. Every time. That's right, Pastor Travis. Every time. He renews our soul and guides our step in His way. The world is fallen and evil. And He protects us with His presence and power even in the shadow of death. And He does that. He gives us His protection. He holds that rod and that staff. And God will hook us and draw us back. He will draw us near to Him. Because he knows in him there's healing. In him there's healing. And you know, I kind of chuckled when I wrote this. To, and he teaches us to celebrate in the front of our enemies. To celebrate. You know, they need to see our joy. Amen. They need to see that we're powerful. They need to see that God has given us something to talk about. It's not a secret, people. When we have a testimony, we must share it. Amen. We must tell people about it. That's how it works. To celebrate in front of our enemies and tell all Satan, he might as well leave me alone. I'm God's child. Amen. And you have no power over me. Amen. And are pursued by God's goodness. We are pursued by His goodness and His mercy throughout our lifetime. When we make that choice to follow Him, we're His. And His goodness and mercy just throughout our life will always be there. The goal through all of this is to be with our Lord forever and ever. This is our journey. So this is our journey that we go on each and every day. And David wrote it so perfect. And he covered every avenue of our life that we're going to be with God. God and heaven are there. It's ours. He gave it to us. But we're still on the journey down here. This is not our home. So we're on the journey in order to further the kingdom of God for His glory. Thus showing us that we have a healthy dependence. Such dependence upon God makes us independent. When we depend on Him, it makes us independent in this world. We find our identity and security in Him. We are free to deal with life and not cave in. We are therefore redeemed by our Lord and invested here for His glory. He puts us here for His glory. Can you imagine how proud, if proud's a word, you know, God says to be humble, but He looks down on His people that are doing His will and how His glory shines and how the angels get excited about what people are doing on this earth. These, us right here, are a powerful tool to God. Amen. We may be few, but we're powerful. Amen. You know, God is here with us. I thank so much that the Holy Spirit came to visit with us today and that He taught us much more in Psalms 23. So next time you get discouraged or you need to pick me up or you need reassurance, you know, this this book is full of reassurance. You know, we don't have to go far. We don't have to go to somebody else. Of course, we're supposed to be encouraging people. Believers are supposed to assemble themselves together so that they can encourage one another, so they can love one another, so they can not judge one another, but to be there for one another. But, and David summed it up so beautifully. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now I would like for all of us to bow our heads and close our eyes. And the question to you will be today is, where do you go when there is a time in your life you need help? Where do you go when there's a time in your life you need comfort and protection and encouragement? Where do you go where you need to be calm in the storm? And yes, where do you go for joy? And do you try to handle everything in your own power and be in control. If you heard anything I have shared with you today, the answer would be, as a believer, the Lord. Who would you choose? Brother Travis, please, in the Lord, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the day, Lord. We thank you so much for this time with you, Lord, spend in your house, Lord. Lift us up, Lord. Just keep us doing what you want us to do for you, for your glory. Lord, just be with us as we administer the, the gospel out to each and every person that we come in contact with, Lord. Just give us that ability. Lord, just take care of us, Lord, and just see us through as we go through our travels the rest of this week, Lord. And just be with Kenny and Ashley today, Lord. Just lift them up. And just keep them hanging through, Lord. And just be with myself and my wife and Miss Ann and Brother Ann as he's off to the Wall Street, Lord. Just give us the power to spread your gospel, Lord. In your heavenly name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's circle up and have our little prayer time. Oh. I want to stand up and sit for a while. Punch that off. Punch it off. Punch it off. Press the red dot. 